Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a quick tour of my 2021 Wolf Pup 16 TS that I got a couple of weeks ago. There's not a lot of videos online of this particular model because it's kind of new other than some videos from dealers. So I wanted to show you a video of the trailer from someone who owns it um, as an actual user and kind of see it in a camp setting. So like I said, this is a 2021 and a half actually of the Wolf Pup 16 TS. Uh, runs like 19 feet and some change, 19 and a half or so. Uh, pulls with, uh, pull it with my Tacoma, 2020 Tacoma TRD Pro, and I uh, still have a couple hundred pounds left of payload on the truck, um, and also a couple hundred pounds left in the trailer for gross weight. So it pulls really nice with that. Uh, well, as nice as it can, the gas mileage is abysmal, but you know. Um, the trailer is pretty similar as far as features go to a lot of the Wolf Pup line. Uh, what I like about it though, is that um, there's a lot of uh, potential with it um, for upgrades and whatnot. So what's nice is I can get a cheaper trailer uh, and then make a lot of additions and, and subtractions actually uh, on my own and uh, kind of save some money there. So save money on the trailer and then make some upgrades on my own. So this particular model and the package I got uh, has the, uh, the little uh, rack on the back. You can put a generator or boxes or bikes or whatever you want. This one did not have the backup camera prep in it, but still pretty simple. You can just mount it and wire it into the marker lights. Not a big deal. Big window on the back, which is nice for the dinette uh, setup. I'm going to remove the dinette though and put in either a couch or a couple chairs, um, which I'll have a video of that when I go to do that. But you'll see on the inside why that's kind of nice to have that big dinette window back there. Um, there's a little leash latch for your pets if you have one. Um, stabilizer jacks, four of them, all four corners. Electric awning. Um, you have your typical vent for your stove, uh, mount for your TV, speakers inside and out that connect to the driven uh, audio system, um, coax cable, uh, 110, 120 uh, AC power outlet. This has the Wolf Hut kitchen which contains basically a mini fridge and the door turns into a table. Mini fridge runs, runs off of AC power. And uh, for right now, I don't really have a use for it. So it's just turned off. But if you're gonna have a big group and you wanna have a lot of beers or drinks and whatnot, it's a really good uh, option, I guess, to have as a drink refrigerator. Um, I may end up taking that out and putting in other stuff, but that's uh, one feature for it. It's got the more ride, uh, I think it's more ride uh, steps. Um, that fold in, which is kind of nice. They're adjustable uh, feet and whatnot. I added this little carpet step, but um, that's kind of neat. The door of this particular wolf pup, and a lot of them is just the glass tinted door. Uh, I added in the uh, new door lock. Um, and then it's got a Lippert um, a thin shade ready setup. Uh, I forgot how much the shade was. I feel it was like 40 bucks or so. So I put that in, but otherwise it's just an open window. So for privacy, you're going to want to do something with this. Um, but it's got the shade that just clips in, you know, with no problems at all. Um, what I have noticed though, with the thin shade is you kind of have to, like I'm struggling right now, <laughs> you kind of have to have two hands to get it going. And then if it sits closed for too long, it doesn't bunch up well. Um, I mean, it does now that I'm making a video about it, but otherwise it tends to you kind of have to help it along. And I think that's just because the gap here in the window is a little wider than the shade itself. So it, it just has room to bend over and it doesn't really um, do well. Um, it's got the handle, pretty standard, folds in either direction, which is great. Um, like I said, electric awning and it, it came with um, a blue LED strip, but because I work in the technical entertainment industry, I like to have variety. So I actually swapped that strip out and put in a normal LED strip so I can change the colors and uh, be real nerdy. So uh, that's kind of fun. Um, I'll probably do a separate video on that. I'm actually going to do a different video that is all the mods I've made so far, um, which is quite extensive. So uh, that'll be fun. One weird quirk I found with the trailer when I got it though, the spacing between the screen and this frame was, was so that this didn't latch. And I don't know if other people have had that problem, but I'm not sure if the screen is slightly skewed in or if it's the frame or not. So pretty simple fix. I just added a couple washers, pushed this out, and it, and it latches real nice now, and it doesn't impede the door or anything like that. Um, the uh, front storage is really all you have 
on the outside. Um, I added a little magnet here, so I don't have to use this clip. And, um, you know, you can put all the stuff you need in there, which is kind of nice. The trailer came with a single AGM battery, which I removed and I put in a, a lithium setup, which I'll, again, I'll do a separate video for. Um, it also came with a single propane tank, which I uh, swapped out and got um, and put in a dual tank setup with the auto changeover valve uh, here. And then I have a couple sensors on each tank that lets me know how much propane is in each tank on the inside, which I'll point out a little bit later. The trailer did not come with an electric tongue jack, so I just bought a cheap 170, well I say cheap, but $170 Lippert um, jack, which is pretty slow, but it gets the job done. It's got the seven pin holder, which is kind of nice. Um, I have a weight distribution hitch put on here. It's the Fastway E2 something something, I think. Here's some of the specs on the trailer. Do a screenshot if you want to see that information. Um, one of the first things I did is I swapped out the tires. It came with the uh, standard trailer China bombs. So I got rid of those and put in some Goodyear Endurance ones right off, the, right off the bat. Like that was just something I wanted to do. Um, water heater, which is electric and propane or propane. Uh, city water connection, fresh water fill, shower, your sewer. There is no black tank flush because you don't really need it. And the reason is because that's your black tank. <laughs> so it's like, it's right there. So you can just get one of those adapters that shoots the water back up if you really want to clean it out. So black tank, gray tank, pretty standard trailer stuff. Low point drain is underneath there. 30 amp service on the trailer, <clears throat> all pretty much standard stuff. Uh, highly recommend these little leveler um, Anderson type blocks. These are not actually Anderson brand, but same idea. Um, I added a regulator, a little Y connection, quick connect um, hose fittings, which is super handy. Uh, two stage filter um, sediment and the standard carbon one. Zero gravity hoses, highly recommend. Uh, all of the marker lights I swapped out for LED, same with the tail lights. Um, again, just because I'm kind of electronic buff, so there's that. Um, one mod I did is the um, Max Air vent. It was just the regular st uh, stock, like small little fan for the bathroom. So this is just the Max Air uh, deluxe like exhaust fan. So it's the cheaper version because I don't need it to have a temperature control and all that. So uh, again, separate video for mods, but uh, that's what I did. Um, the air conditioner unit is not black when you buy it. I uh, didn't like seeing the giant white shroud. Again, I'm just kind of weird that way, but so I got some UV resistant uh, flat black spray paint. So that's a, uh, it turned out really nice, actually. I was <laughs> thought that was going to look kind of cheesy, but it looked really nice. Um, sewer hoses um, in the back was kind of nice. Um, they have this uh, new cool little thing that is magnetic. You tie onto your hose and you pop it on there, and then it just magnets to the frame. So that's super nice. Um, I just got that. Um, again, big back window, which is kind of nice, but that's pretty much it for the outside. Again, a lot of the features that all the other wolf pups have. Um, and then I just made some, some of my own modifications, which I'll do a separate video for. Now, going inside, the layout's pretty neat. So when you first walk in, the bed's in the front. It comes with a typical RV queen, um, a little bit smaller than a standard queen. There's a, a headboard that runs across here, which I removed. Uh, it's just a few screws, and I put in my own uh, residential size, queen size mattress, which fits perfectly uh, here in the trailer. Um, it's also still light enough to where you can lift this whole thing up and access storage. A little note about this though, uh, if you're already a wolf pup owner, this is probably a, a typical trailer thing, but with the headboard there, it's not a problem, but on this side, the mattress is gonna always ride up against this as you go to pull it up. So I've just been kind of getting the habit of raising the shades if I'm ever going to you know, lift this up and have access to the storage location like so and now you can see all the access you have to the inside um, like i said i upgraded the batteries to battleborn lithium iron phosphate batteries with the multi plus 3000 watt inverter um, and also what i did is uh this is just a brief explanation i'm going to have a more detailed video on this whole setup but i also put in the uh, surge guard surge protector that's in line um, so I don't have to lug around the big, huge surge protectors that you plug into the pedestal uh, and potentially get stolen, even if you add a lock onto it and all, all that kind of stuff. It just, I plug in, don't have to worry about it. It 
detects power um, fluctuations. It shuts off automatically if it's too, if the voltage is too high or too low. It's great. It's in line. I don't have to worry about it. Set it and forget it. Um, okay, so the Wolfpup TS comes with this little speaker um, charging station thing, but I have no interest in using that. So I just use it for the for the USB ports, which is kind of nice. Of course, I didn't realize it had those ports until after I installed this. So I swapped out the stock uh, outlet that's here and put in the one that has USB um, ports. Um, so now I have like <laughs> double USB ports. Uh, this is just my Verizon um, MiFi, you know, 4G, uh, 5G Wi-Fi thing. Um, I plan on putting like a little nightstand thing here to put like my phone watch holder and all that. Uh, storage above the bed. There's also a couple lights down there. Um, pretty okay storage. Uh, it goes all the way across uh, the whole front of the trailer. Um, the trailer does not come with the hi, the trailer does not come with the TVs, uh, but it does come with a mount here, only here. So there's the mount that's here that is also the same mount on the outside. So I got a 24 inch Vizio that mounts onto. I also put on a Amazon Fire Stick on the back of that, um, and that obviously connects to my Wi-Fi here. And you can just have your power and your cable. This is the main uh, cable boost uh, antenna plug-in. Uh, and then I also put a TV in the back and did some modifications there, which I'll show you in a second. Um, standard control panel. This was the propane thing I added I told you about that uh, lets me know how much propane I have left in the tanks, um, both left and right. And then um, this is the normal control panel for everything else. So your awning lights, your convenient light, which is on the other side for your hookups are, and your awning extension and retraction switch, which all that is also controllable through the Lippert One, Con uh, Lippert Con One Connect something uh, app on your phone. So you can open and close your awning and turn your lights on and off. All the lights in the trailer are all individually turned on and off. There's no switch um, that you can turn them all on and off, but I am gonna do that myself at some point. Kitchen's pretty okay size, not a whole lot of storage. Um, but you know, if you have an RV already, you know that you make best of what you got. So there's a lot of options for storage and there's a lot of hidden spaces and cabinets and panels that you can pop open and throw some stuff in. So I definitely plan on taking advantage of that. This is the driven audio system I was talking about. Dual zone control, speakers on the outside, speakers on the inside, AM, FM radio, HDMI input, AV inputs, a lot of different options. Honestly, system is okay. Sounds okay. Sometimes this speaker stops working. I have to reset it. Uh, you know, it, it's cheap to, to be honest. So, um, the kitchen's great. A lot of counter space, stainless steel sink, but, um, pro tip, the stainless steel will rust if you don't keep an eye on it. So either, you know, keep uh, some steel wool handy or bronze wool, whatever you like to use, try to keep it dry. If you can, maybe add some polish and stuff to hold it out, but it's pretty cheap stainless steel material. So it, it will rust if, uh, you don't pay attention to it. This is not the faucet that came with the trailer. Um, the one that came with the trailer looked like this, except it was more square and it just sprayed straight down. It did move, but my problem was when you go to wash dishes, it just bounces off and gets all over the place. So I wanted a faucet that I can, you know, move the handle around. And this was 45 bucks or so on Amazon, uh, pretty inexpensive and relatively easy to just swap out. The trailer comes with a little, uh, what they call a hand sanitizer station. I just put um, soap, uh, hand soap in there. It makes it a little bit easier. It's got the two burner stove, standard Greystone. You turn it on, you got your burners. Um, this thing folds up, up against there. Not a big deal there. Your storage is okay. A lot of storage on this side, not so much on this side with the sink, but again, uh, you can make it work. If you pop out this panel, there's a little bit of space under there up into the furnace that you could probably use. On this side, not so much because that's where the mini fridge is from the outside. So. Again, I might I might remove that mini fridge and then opens up a whole a whole new world of possibilities. Um, you got your microwave and your range hood. Um, big selling point on this trailer is the fridge. Uh, it is a huge fridge and freezer, and it's 12 volts, so no worrying about propane or any of that. Um, real deep size freezer and fridge that you can put all sorts of stuff in. Um, I don't have a whole lot in there right now, but uh, and then a little locking handle there for for travel. Um, I added this mirror. It does not come stock, although I think it should. Um, the other thing too is it has a thermostat for your furnace. I swapped that out for a digital one uh, just because I like reading numbers instead of lines. <laughs> um, and then uh, 
you got your shower and your toilet. Um, I'm six one and it's it's kind of tight in there, but it, it for a quick little shower just to get yourself clean, it does the job. Um, standard plastic toilet, and then like I said, I, I put in the Max Air uh, fan uh, in replacement of the standard fan that comes with the trailer. Pretty easy install, but pretty messy too with all the Dicor stuff, but uh, definitely worth it. I think that's one thing people should do. Um, and when this fan is on like feed, uh, speed four, it, it's a it's a hurricane in here. So moving on to the back, you have the dinette section that I talked about earlier. Super nice if you like eating meals and you know you have these all these windows to look out if you're in a very scenic place like like I am. I'm in Lake Jennings right now in East County, San Diego. Um, and it's pretty great, but I plan on taking all this out and putting in either a couch, uh, like a Thomas Paine couch, or a couple of the recliner type seats on a swivel so that you can actually turn around and look outside with some sort of small table in the middle. Uh, this shelf unit does not come with the trailer. This is normally just an open space um, from the floor here all the way back to the wall. Um, I just put this uh, shelf in yesterday. I got it from, from Walmart. And um, because the wheel well is down there, there's the cover for the sink, by the way. Because the wheel well is down here, I have to just cut out a little notch for the shelf and that just will go up against the wall and it'll look like it's all part of the trailer. And this, this shelf fits perfectly here. So I think, again, it was like Walmart, 30 bucks. Highly recommend. Um, over seating storage here in the back. Again, you can put food, whatever you want. I just keep like my household items up here on this side. I'll probably pop this panel out and put another little like square bin storage on that. And then some space on this side where I just like to hang my uh, things. Um, okay, so then the last thing is the TV. Um, I added, like I said, I added the TV in the back here. Uh, I mounted it to the existing stud that's there. The TV is really light, it's a 32 inch Vizio. And then what I did is I added these, uh, this power outlet and this uh, cable um, port here because otherwise the, it's, the TV's just sitting here. So this uh, coax runs all the way through into the back and kind of see it there. I've still got to clean that up a little bit, but it goes back behind this panel. Um, oh, here's the oversink storage, obviously. And uh, this panel pops off and you have all your wiring and stuff. In fact, if you clean up some of that wiring, you can actually get this panel to push back a little bit more, giving you a little more space. So that's, that's next on the list as well. Um, there's a light underneath the cabinet there. You got a little GFCI outlet. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, the ability to have a TV back here. So I just put in a full motion, um, mount there for the TV and it's worked out really well so far. Oh, the trailer does come prepped with the, uh, Lippert one control hotspot thing up to you. If it's worth it, it's like three or 400 bucks for the kit to swap that out and actually make it work. I found it cheaper just to do my own little Verizon thing, add a line to my existing unlimited data and it works great. So up to you, but that comes pre-wired for it. And then the last thing with the electrical stuff too is uh, the trailer does have the juice pack, which is all that is is just a 50 watt solar panel on the roof. Um, and then a little baby solar controller that's underneath this, the storage area towards the front. So that's, I'm swapping that out. I'm going to, I'm going to redo the wiring, but using the existing lines to pull it through. And that's going to go to some new panels. I'm going to throw up on the roof and a, uh, Victron solar controller, uh, charge controller, which will tie in nicely to my existing new electrical setup. But again, separate video and all that stuff when all is said and done. So yeah, one more little turn. You got your bed and your bathroom, and then you got the rest of the trailer. Pretty good size. Um, I like it so far. I've gone on a few trips. I'm sort of new to solo RVing. Um, I grew up with trailers and RVs, but I just, uh, haven't really owned one myself. So I'm still learning some stuff here and there and I uh, appreciate any sort of tips and tricks. But again, this is the 2021 Wolf Pup 16 TS and uh, super pleased with it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, again, I'm gonna do a separate video of a bunch of mods. So if you have any questions about those, let me know. And any suggestions, let me know. Um, anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon.